What's up, guys? It's Jamal Pogues. You're walking the... Oh, damn it. <laughs> damn it. Look, kick out, kick yeah. What's up, guys? This is Jamal Pogues. You're walking... You... <laughs> kick out, kick out. What's up, guys? It's Jamal Pogues. You're watching the Marcus Deegan Show. The Marcus Deegan <laughs> Show. Speaking, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. What's the story, guys? Welcome to another episode of the pod. I'm your host, Marcus Deegan, shooting from Sin City, Las Vegas, the place of bright lights and world title fights. Thank you very much for joining back on my channel. I hope you're enjoying the content. Today's episode is proudly brought to you by Muse Psychedelic Infused Products. Now, guys, if you want to open your eyes to a more vivid life, Muse Life. Now, look, they got them in chocolates and they got them in capsules. You've even got them in these little chews. Open your eyes to more colorful if you want to be more focused, if you want to be happier. It's not about tripping. It's not about getting high. It's not about taking drugs. It's about changing your consciousness. I'm loving it. Muse, all of the details are going to be in the description. Today, we've got a big heavyweight on the program, 265 pounds, six foot three, and that means one thing. I could do absolutely nothing against this man except bring him his coffee. Would you welcome to the podcast... The Stormtrooper, Jamal Pogues. What's up, brother? What's up, man? How you doing, man? Good. <laughs> I'm good, man. Do you look you're comfortable in there? It looks like a this kind of set looks like a 10-year-old boy's bedroom with all the toys, right? Yeah, I love it. I love Where did it. the name the Stormtrooper come from? Okay. It's crazy. I'm gonna tell you this story, all right? So I was 17. Uh I switched gyms to Joe Daddy Stevenson's. So my old coach talking trash, you know, he got guys who can beat me up, all this stuff. You know, I'm young, I'm aggressive, you know, I'm from the hood, you know. So I called him out. I called my coach out to a fight. You know, I went to his gym and I went in the middle of the practice and and was like, yo, what's up, man? You've been talking all this shit for a year. What's up? Let's fight. And then uh, obviously we didn't fight, you know, but then uh, Damn it. Um, it was, you know, I come back a couple of days later, you know, my, you know, everybody sat down and like, bro, you can't do this. You know, you can't act like that. And then they're like, you know what? Your name's, your name's a stormtrooper because that's, you just fucking shit up, man. And then kind of did that in my career, you know, just kind of beat people and put myself in a position, you know, everyone was against me, so I just been stormtrooping. Mate, I decked a place out with stormtrooper helmets today because obviously I'm a massive Star Wars fan and the stormtroopers were aesthetically what I wanted to be when I was a kid, so when I found out that your call name, nickname, what was just a fight name, stage right, name? Yeah. Thought we'd deck it out. Well, thanks for coming into the show, man. No. Do you do many podcasts? You, I don't. I you don't? I don't? No. I don't, I don't, because it's just... I don't know, it's just weird, you know, because it's like a lot of people are too political, a lot of people are too uh, emotional. You know, I feel like if I have to do it, I should be able to express myself so people can get to know me better, you know? Yeah, and that's the whole point of these podcasts is to, like, take it off mainstream ESPN or Fox News or whatever and to be put in an environment where we can talk about stuff like that. I don't kind of go down the political route because I'm from Australia, so mm -hmm. even though I've been here for 22 years, I'm still not a citizen yet, even yeah. though I think the country is completely fucked up at the moment. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't really like to talk about it too much because I don't think I have – not the right. I mean, I suppose I don't really have the right right now. I don't think. I mean, twenty years. Yeah, you know, yeah. Say. You know, I just think it's more like, you know, I, I don't mind hearing your side. You know what I mean? But if I hear your side, you got to hear my side, and we shouldn't have to call each other names. You know, make you know, or say anything, get mad or frustrated. It's just like everyone has different beliefs. We have different upbringings, so we have different you know views of seeing things. So that's why I think. No, um, I agree with you, but it, it's just funny how it divides the country. It, <laughs> sorry, it's another thing that divides yeah. the country is politics, man. Mm -hmm. Even though everyone just wants what I believe is, you know, the best for their country, but yet two 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 opposite sides are just like polar opposites. It's just unbelievable. Yeah, everybody either too much one side or too much in the other. I've always tried to pride myself being in the middle to understand both sides. You know, mm. also I still have my opinions, but I try to understand everyone's opinion. That's just me as a person. Yeah. But then everyone's so one sided where it's just like, you know what? I just rather not just talk to anybody and just do my own thing. Have you have you always been kind of outspoke an outspoken guy? Always. You know, I, no, no, I didn't. I think uh, I was always shy, timid. Um, like, Even at that size, yeah, like like confidence, you know. Uh, I just think over over time, you know, you just kind of get tired of not being hurt, you know, and then you just speak up. You were probably one of those kids that was that big in the eighth grade, right? Yeah, yeah. So I you was, probably you probably got bullied a little bit. I then. did. I did get bullied. You yeah, know, I got bullied. I was always like shy. Like it's weird to say that I always fought bullies, but I was always like that kid that tried to be alone, be by itself. You know, even when I was growing up, I played with toys by myself. I didn't want to play with my cousins. You know, always more reserved, but then everyone come bother me. You know, and then that's kind of how I always yeah. end up fighting. People wouldn't think that big guys get bullied, but you would be targeted because you were probably completely different from all the other kids as far as how big you were. Yeah, being big, you know, uh, 
trouble. I had problems with weight issues as a kid. You know, obviously they make fun of you for being big and being fat, and then uh, you know that led on to you know junior high eventually, and then you know a little bit into high school until like. I guess all the girls started to like me. You know what I mean? But then uh wanted some of that BBC. Yeah, yeah, it was over after that. Yeah. You know, it was over after that. You know? yeah, yeah. I didn't mom, I didn't do anything in high school. I'm sorry. <laughs> when did you realize that you were not I mean, because you've probably always been able to fuck people up, but when did you realize that you were actually really good at it and could put it into something that you could make money out of? Like when did that journey begin? You know what? Honestly, it was when I moved out here to Vegas. Sounds crazy. I know I've been fighting before that. You know, I've been fighting before that, but I'll say uh, you know, always I loved it. I was never confident as I, you know, I should say, you know, as I should be, you know. And mm. uh, I think moving out here to Vegas and being alone and being in your own thoughts forced me to be just, you know, just do my thing. You yeah. know, I just kind of, I kind of found myself out here. So I, that's why I think me moving out here was a best, big decision, you know. Did you have a wife or anything like that? No, so no. you just came out here on your own? Moved out here And where, were you, where did you come from? I came from California, Victorville, you know, small city. I mean, yeah. it's getting bigger now, but, you know, yeah. like, very p poor city in a sense, you know, uh, just, it's not much to do, you know, either you do you do sports, you go to, we have a state prison, so you go to jail, you're in the streets, you know, it's it's not, it's much work, gym, or prison, you know, that's the only thing you do in that city. So how did you not go down the prison and gang and criminal way of life? What what steered you from that? You No, I did a little bit, you know. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, you know, I had friends, and, you know, you get to a point where I was just mad at life, and then, you know, hung out with the wrong people, did a lot of bad things, but... Uh, a lot of drugs? You, no, not so much drugs, you know, I was like... Um, you know, I watched my family do a lot of drugs, you know, so mm. it was just kind of like, I kind of stayed away from it skipped that. that gen it skipped you. Yeah, it skipped me, you know, so I seen it, I seen what it done to my family, my cousins, you know, and then, uh, so I, you know, even a lot of alcohol too, you know, like I grew up like my dad, you know, being abusive, you know, alcoholic and stuff like that. So to you, yeah, to me, you know, growing up, I think that's probably why I didn't have a lot of conf confidence, you know what I mean? Like my dad always broke me down, you know, so. Can he still of, do that? No, no. You know, but we're good. We're good. That's one thing. Me and my dad's good. Me You're my, good now? Yeah, man. That's... Only since moving out here? Because that seems like a short amount of time. No, I think it was, you know, we had some altercations in the past. and then, Physical? Yeah, a little physical. You know? Really? And then it just kind of like, you know, I think it realized I was my way of finally like just kind of stepping out of my own shell, you know? I just, mm. yeah, so I just think after that. I was just kind of like, I started, it took me a long time to find myself, you know what I mean? Find my confidence, who I was as a person, what I like to do. I've been steered in so many directions, been shut down. That's that's stupid. That's lame. You know, you're dumb as hell. Had all that growing up. So now I'm like, I get to be me, you know? So when people see me now being a kid, I'm like, yo, I didn't get to be a kid when I was younger, you know? So now I get to be a big kid mm. and I'm in the UFC, but I still want to be a kid now, you know? How old, how old are you? 28. I was going to say, you're still not even 30 yet. Yeah, we were just talking before about age and, you know, having a young spirit. Like mm -hmm. I was telling the guys, like I'm 54 this year mm -hmm. and, but I don't, I don't physically feel it because I feel, I don't even feel that age. I, yeah. It's even hard for me to say, fuck, I'm 54. What? Yeah. yeah. I'm 30. Yeah. Because I have that young spirit. So you seem that, uh, when you say you didn't really you couldn't really be a kid. Is it because of your environment? Yeah, my environment. You know, everything is shut down. It's dumb. It's stupid. You know, like I said, when you when you have big dreams in a small city and around, like, I ain't going to say, you know, disrespect small-minded people, you know, everybody shut it down and you start to believe them, you know? So I think yeah. getting away or not so much getting away, I think me actually taking those chances and doing those things and everybody kind of caught on. But then I said to find me, you know, and I was like, all the stuff now that people say was stupid that I was doing, they think it's funny now. Are your parents still together? Parents still together, yeah. You know, I just think it's, yeah, it's cool. You I've know? seen him in the audience at the Apex. Yeah. And your mum looked pretty emotional. Yeah. You sounded very emotional after that fight. You fucked yeah. your hand up too, I believe. Broke my hand, still got the little, you know, little Oh, did you have to get hand. surgery on that? I had to get surgery. Is that your first surgery as a mixed first martial artist? Ever, ever. Ever in your life? Ever That's, in my life. Is that your dominant hand? Yeah, my right hand, yeah. Mm. It's just kind of... How's the, how's the mindset when you get something like that? Do you think, fuck, it's over now. I'm never going to be able to hit that hard. Or It's a long process. It's longer than what people think it is. Yeah. Way longer than what people think it is. A couple you know? years? No, it, it, it takes that six, seven, eight months, you know, to be 100%. Again. Do you think it's been, it was slightly damaged over years and years and years of constant pounding, getting those hairline fractures, and then it just broke with that mm -hmm. overhand right? Bad punch, right on the forehead. A bad punch. Right on the forehead. Just right, right, right on the forehead, broke my hand. And I ain't going to lie to you, part of me quit. <laughs> you it know? did, yeah. Cause I was like, I had like a during number, the fight. Yeah, I quit mentally a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. I had that. I had that almost one round. You know, and then I was fighting him, and he was grabbing my hand, and I was taking him down, but I couldn't really punch with his hand. He was, you know, it was just one of those things where it was just like I could quit right now. I was like, no, we're not going to quit. 
no, we got to figure a way, you know. So you always have those back and forth emotions, you know. Yeah, that's why, you know, I always revert back to this when I talk to you guys about how strong your mindset has to be in this game. Like you can be a big cunt, mm -hmm. fucking 265, six foot three, but if you don't have the mental capability to be in the UFC, the biggest promotion in the world, you're not going to get very far, right? No, you got to be tough, you know. And, you know, it's this thing I tell people, fake it till you make it. But the thing about this fighting thing is you can't fake it for you too can't. long. You can't fake it for too long. You know, eventually, it's especially at this high level, you know, everyone's trying to get paid. Everyone wants to be the next guy. Everyone wants to, you know. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you know, uh, deal with your problems before you get to the UFC. Do not <laughs> deal with whatever emotional problems you have, you know, because once you get here, you know, there's no stopping. They go. What were the other promotions that you performed in before you got to the UFC that were on a higher level? Uh, Bellator. You right. know, I have one fight on the Bellator. I fought King of the Cage. King of the Cage. Uh, I fought LFA. You know, They're all good ones. Yeah, a lot of good ones. I fought C3 fights. was a big show like um, in Oklahoma. You know, I fought a lot of guys out of there in their hometowns. That's kind of yeah. like how my career kind of was based off of was fighting everybody in their hometowns. And beating them. Beating them, yeah. You know, it's tough. You know, it's not. For me, I had nothing to lose. So to me, I didn't really care about fighting people in their hometown. Sounds a little bit like Sean Strickland. He doesn't really have anything to lose. No. Well, maybe he does now. Yeah. But you're over at Syndicate, right? Mm -hmm. But you're with Iridium and Jason House. Yeah. How great's that management company? You know, it was easy. You know, it was easy when I first signed with them. You know, uh, I think Lance. You know, yeah. I was in the gym. He was just like, "Hey, you're Jamal." And I was like, "Yeah." He was like, "What happened to you?" And I was like, "I don't know. I just life." <laughs> you yeah. Know? Been out the fight game for almost a year and a half. You know, no one knew where I was, and then. You know, so where did he see you, Lance? At Syndicate, you know, I signed up at Syndicate, and then he knew who I was, remembered me, because I was one of the top prospects, you know, before I stopped because fighting. Because of the Contender Series? Yeah, Contender yep. Series and all that stuff. And then, you know, he was just like, hey, uh, you want to fight again? I was like, no. You weren't, you weren't interested <laughs> no, in fighting again? No, no, man, I want to do it. I was like, no, I'm good. No, you, I'm so you were just at the gym just getting fit, just, just staying trying to get fit back, and training? Trying to, just coming back, you know? Yeah. Been out from, I've been out the fight game for a year and a half, just coming back, and then... You know, he was like, I started training, started kind of falling in love with it again in the process, helping everyone else out. And mm -hmm. then he said, how about if I get you a fight in the UFC? And I was like, if you give me a fight in the UFC, I'll be back. And then, like, I think maybe I was training for two months, three months at the time. And then he said, got you four weeks, contender series, let's go. And I was like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> like, let's do it. I'll take it. And is that where things kind of changed, you reckon, for you? Yeah. Once I won the fight, I was just more like, oh, I'm in a – it, uh, like, you know, this hit me hard. You know, I realized that once Dana said I was in the UFC, it's kind of like, it was a dream. Like, I was like, am I, I'm really here this time? Like, you, you said, yeah. Like, I've been chasing a dream for so long and had so many shut doors, you know, you kind of give up on the dream. Yeah, you, you do. Know, you know, I had probably three, four opportunities that were shut down on me. So That kinda, were promised to you and that, that were, hey, yeah. this is going to happen, brother. 100%, I got yeah. you back. You're going to make this amount. Sorry, brother, it's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah, I yeah. feel you, bro. It's yeah. happened it's to like, me too, buddy. So it's like, I'm done. I'm done with the sport. I was yeah. like, I'll figure out what I'll do next. And then after that, I kind of, you know, came back. You know, he kind of gave me that spark again for the sport, made me love it again. You know, remind me of that that kid that front, that once started this sport. Do you think you love it more now than when you previously first started? I think I appreciate it more. You appreciate, I appreciate it more. Because I remember being away, and this was the only thing I thought about. You know, even though I didn't want to come back, this was it was always that it was guys that I beat that were in the UFC, it was guys that I beat that were like in PFL, guys that I beat that was in Bellator making, you know, 100,000, 200,000, and, you know, this guy's top 10, this guy's this, and I'm like, dude, I killed that guy. Like, <laughs> like I also beat that dude up in training one day, or I sported that guy a couple years ago, and I beat the shit out of him, and like, oh, shit, okay. like. So you'd already manifested it then. It was just a, a matter of time, yeah. really. I knew I was going to come back. I just didn't know how, you mm. know. I, you know you always make a plan, but it doesn't go that way. You know, my plan was just – Let's get in shape, and whatever happens, you know, maybe end of the year we get a fight. But yeah. it ended up being four months. Yeah. <laughs> it was, you know, I was thinking, yeah. let me train for six, you know, like six months, and then, you know, have a training camp for three months, and then, you know, fight end of the year. No, it just happened in, like, four months. And it was like, yep, go fight. And I was like, I guess I'm doing it. Who, who do you, like, look up to in the industry as far as, like, who do you kind of, I don't want to say, I don't want to say, you know, mark your career like but is, yeah. there, is there certain people in the in the industry that you're like it's, it's, yeah. yeah you know i always watch guys I'm, I'm a big fan man like uh when i look at the new guys even old school guys i think of like let's say jose aldo jose aldo is my number one of all time i loved his just aggressiveness his leg kicks you know it was one you know i just loved the way he did it you know and when it came to wrestling it was matt Hughes. you know matt Hughes was the guy who introduced me to the sport you know and god bless him I, you know that was a guy i always looked up to you know growing up in the sport then obviously you had john jones 
you know, and then I got to be in Albuquerque for a bit, train out there, you know, with him when I was you trained with John Jones. I was younger. I was like 19, 20. You know, I was out there for like, I think for like a month. You know, I got to be out there and train with him. So I think, and there's just a lot of guys that like over the years that like kind of, you know, I watch and I just kind of love their style, you know. Is there anyone that that's kind of like, that you've been like starstruck when you've seen like backstage of the UFC or up at the Performance Institute that you've gone, fuck, that's... Okay, you know. one time I seen DC, right? Oh, yeah. So uh, it's actually my last fight. I see DC. And I talked to DC. And I was like, what's up, DC? What's up, bro? In the middle of the fight. My last fight, I just talked to DC. And DC's like, he's talking to me like I'm just a normal person. Like, you know, but like I didn't realize what I did. I was just like, yo, what's up, DC? You like this fight? Like, just talking to him That's in the funny. middle of the fight. And then, you know, at the end of the fight, you know, I got to, you know, say what's up to him. But that was, that was like one guy that kind of like... Oh shit! Like I'm, yeah. in, I'm in the UFC and I'm around these guys, you know. So yeah. it's crazy seeing me being around all these guys now. And yeah, being around your heroes that 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 you, that you used to watch on TV or yeah. play on the game, and then all of a sudden you're fucking fighting in right front next of them. to them. You're just talking to them, and they just talk to you like it's gonna be surreal, right? It's crazy. It's a crazy moment. It's like a. It's kind of like have, have you seen that movie Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's he's a, he's an, he's like plays in a tribute band. Yeah. And then they pull him on as the lead singer in yeah. the real band from the yeah. tribute. It's, it's kind of like it's, that. It's like you go in there and you talk to them, and then they they talk to you as their you're their peers, but you're like you're not. I'm not on my. I'm not on the same level as you. Yeah. Why am I? Well, you know, but they just talk to you just, you know, like you're normal. But I met like I knew guys along the way, like Cody Garbrandt. You know, I knew him for like many a year. So you know, getting looks to like he's there. on the way uh, on the up and up again. Yeah, you know, be he's, fighting on UFC 300. I'm happy for him. You know, I'm, I'm happy, happy for him. him as well. He's a fucking gun back in the day. Like yeah. you, Cody had a few ups and downs. That, you know, um, you know, I don't know what went on with him personally. I think that maybe the breakup from his missus kind of affected mm. him a little bit. But um, I've always had mad respect for that. He actually sent me a few t-shirts once. Yeah, I, I love Cody. I think I Cody's Cody like too. a good person. You know, and. Knowing him for years, and I know the stigma he got. I was like, Cody's actually a good person. You know, even he got a lot of hate, didn't he? He got a lot of hate. A lot. Uh, but he didn't. I didn't feel like he deserved it. If you really knew him, you know what I mean. But right. But like once again, like my mom comes to the UFC, and this dude gives my mom love. You know, like hey, you know, just so many people that I like grow up watching. I'm like, dang, like I'm just talking to these guys on a normal basis. Yeah, UFC fans are well, MMA fans are pretty critical of, of the athletes. Aren't they? One loss, it's over. You're the worst thing in the world. You're they can turn so quickly. It's easy. They hate you. They hate you. I was talking about this the other day when Volk just lost to Ilya Taporia and he went home to Australia. Last time he went home, or the, you know, when he went home as a champion, the airport was just <laughs> fucking packed full of people. This time he went home, it was just his girl and his baby. And yeah. Maybe a couple of friends. Maybe yeah, a couple yeah, of maybe friends. Maybe a couple of friends. And, and so what does that say? Does that say, in a sense, like, Obviously, people can turn on the on on the flick of a dime, but is it like that's all that really matters? Is what's here is my yeah. kid, my wife, or it's weird, right? Like, no. So I went, I've been through that. So it was yeah. just like you know when I had my debut. You know, I was nine and one as an amateur. When I was the youngest state championship. You know, state champion out of California. You know, and I had my debut and I lost. You know, I had sponsors. You know, I had the girl. I had the you know obviously had a little bit of money in my pocket. You know, all the groupies, whatever yep. you want to say. And then you know I remember losing and then. Like sponsorship sponsors don't hit you back up, you know. Your your girlfriend starts acting funny, you know. Your your so called friends that you made, you know. And it was like that put me through the worst depression for almost like six months, you know what I mean. And then it was just like I just watched. It made me hate the sport, but it also motivated me because I was like, when I get here, oh, you guys go hate me. Like, I can't it's, fucking. I'm, I'm. It's lonely. I'm, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's one of the loneliest feelings in the world, you know. So if you do this sport. I think that's why I love the experience I had before getting into the UFC. You know, it was just like, I've been through this. I know what you're going through. Mm. Been there. I've been there before the UFC, you know. Yeah. So I feel like that kind of gives me my little advantage over people. But I've seen it. You know, they change on you, the fans, the your family, your you know, everybody. They Everyone. Talk about you. For, yeah. Spon like you said, sponsors. Sponsors change up. You know, they don't, you know, you're no longer talking to this person. Or people think all of a sudden you just suck because, <laughs> like, you lost one fight. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, you're trash. And you're like, I'm not trash. Like, yeah. you know, like. Yeah. Okay. I had an idea for like a reality show, like you get the biggest trolls on the internet that mm -hmm. troll, not not like bully beatdown, but kind of like, and you pick out the biggest trolls that have talked shit, and they have to do the full camp with you yeah. to see if they can do it, and then I guarantee they would never say another word ever again. Just going through one training camp, just going through one session. Yeah, let's do it every day. Every day. Every let's day. Do let's do it every single day. You know, you're gonna So we got jujitsu for three hours, we've got boxing tomorrow, we've mm -hmm. got wrestling the next day. We got strength and conditioning, we got 
Yeah. You know, we got to spar this guy. We're bringing in the guy to help you spar. Hey, we got to hit those Saturday runs. You know, it's like that's the part people don't realize. You know, it's um, all our moment comes into 15 minutes and sucks that, you know, that decides our future, you know, 15 <laughs> minutes. But, you know, you see all the people talk so much trash, you know, and then and you just you look at people. Now, that's why I hate the Internet so much. And I'm just like, dude, I will literally slap the shit out of all you guys. Like, but what do they do when they see you, bro? No, they you, want a fucking picture, you, right? Yeah, they want a picture. Uh, I fought Oklahoma one time, right? I fought Kyle Noblin. He was nine and zero. I was three and one, and um, I go to his hometown, Oklahoma, and racist, you know, no, like. So I remember walking out. This dude was like, "You nigger, you blah blah blah. I've killed this nigger." Blah. You know, this dude's yelling. I'm watching him, and I was white like, dude, white dude, just yelling at me. And I was like, "Oh yeah." And I look over like, "I'm gonna kill you, bro." I was like, "Watch, I'm gonna kill this dude so bad." And then you know, you had Kyle. He was sitting at the gate, barking at me before you walk in the cage. So the commission. <laughs> Is not supposed to allow you to come over for sitting in your corner, but they allow him to come to the gate. Hometown guy, obviously. I go in there, I beat the shit out of this dude, and at the end of the fight, you gotta do a post, you know, the post fight interviews and everything. Take, you know, sign pictures. The same dude that called me all those words, all those nasty words, that's for a signature. And I looked at him, I was like, Nah, fuck you, bro. I was like, No. And he just went, Oh, I was just trying to, I was just trying to, you know, take you out your elements. Like, No, bro, you don't, you don't say that kind of shit to people. Especially that word. You know, you don't say that. Like, Especially that word. I was like, oh, okay, cool. But it's funny. We had to hurry up and get out the arena, though. They were like, hey, no, we got to hurry up and get you out of here. Is that <laughs> right? Yeah, they escorted me right out the arena with the security. They were just like, hey, um, hurry up, finish this post-fight interview. We got to walk you straight out to the car and go back to the hotel. <laughs> and I was like, all right. like, What what are we, in fucking 1920? Yeah, that's, that's what they told me. I remember. It was just like, all right, cool. You know, uh, the bar lady, I remember, like, people didn't want to service inside the bar. And the owner of the bar, like, she came up to have food. She was like... She heard what they were saying, and she was like, you're fucking fired. Hey, you guys can eat here for free all week, you know, for fight week. Tell me, i just seen a lot of crazy stuff into the sport. Yeah, who's – what's the – I was – who was I interviewing yesterday? Dev – was it yesterday or the day before? Devin Goodale? Okay. You know Devin? Yeah, I heard of him. Oh, yeah. He ripped that guy's finger off in the – Mm-hmm. So that's pretty crazy, a guy losing his finger in the octagon. What would you say is, like, one of the most bizarre fucking things you've seen in your whole fight career? And like me fighting? Yeah, like all oh, seeing like someone crap their pants or someone throw up or like. Ooh, I seen a dude. Obviously, we we talk about leg breaks. Hey. But uh, I seen a dude kick um, somebody, knock him out, goes back down. His freaking ankle was just hanging, and it's just broken. And it was like, obviously, he got the win and knockout. But it was funny because he kick comes back, rolls over it, and you just see the thing just flipping. Oh. And he was like, he got the knockout win, but like. His ankle <laughs> like split in half. I was just like, oh, yeah, that's that's probably the worst thing I've seen live. Personally, for me, I broke someone's arm with an arm bar, and I remember I pulled it out the socket, and I was still shaking it because he wouldn't tap, and the ref didn't like see that. Yeah, he was in would, a position where he couldn't, where he couldn't, he couldn't see, see it. it. But it came out the socket, and I'm like wiggling it around so it don't go back in place. That's kind of like a thing you do. And like, the really? dude, and the dude staring at me right in the face, like he didn't tap, he didn't shed a tear, he didn't. He stared at me the whole time, and the ref stopped. It was Mike, Be uh, Mike Beltran. Mike Beltran stopped. Oh him, yeah. And he just looked, and he was just, oh, stop, stop, stop. And the dude was like, why are you stopping? And then his arm was just like, like kind of like when you look at Jamal Hill and Paul Craig, kind of like that, like a little bit worse than that. But dude didn't make a sound, just like Jamal Hill didn't make a sound, didn't just, oh yeah, my arms, okay, cool. Do people ever cry? Yeah. When you hit them, like. <laughs> <laughs> like cry from pain? No, I had this dude punch me and kept giving me compliments. That was like weird. <laughs> he was like, "Oh yeah, that hurt. Good job." And I was like, thanks. "Well, while you were hitting him, like while I was hitting him, and I had my corner at the time, I was like, stop talking to him." And I was just like, "Thanks, bro. You know, hit him again. Yeah. Oh shit, that hurt. Good job, man. Fuck, nice takedown." I was like, "Thanks, man." <laughs> that was like one of the hardest, weirdest fights to ever fight. You know, because he was just so nice. What's the rules on talking to your opponent, especially like even at the UFC level? Can you just go back and forth, or is it got to be? I mean, is there is there? They try to get you with. I gonna say the UFC, but the sport itself, like the commission, tries to tell you to be respectful. It's a sport, but it's kind of like I'm getting punched. You know, it's a lot of emotions. You know, so it's like whatever I say, just excuse me. You know, like mm. when I one of my fights, I think when I fought Bigger Gal, I was just talking shit to him. He speak only Portuguese. You know, and like, but it was just me talking shit the whole time. Like, yeah. Hey, Motherfucker, like, this shit hurt, don't it? Huh? Huh? Yeah, you thought you were going to do this, but the whole time he don't even speak English. Was so he like, answering you, though? <laughs> he, he just like, <laughs> <laughs> like... But I was like, ah, this no, he he knows I'm saying something. But, you know, it's just... They tell you not to do it, but it's kind of hard when you get, like... Yeah, it would be. Fight. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Plus, as fans, we love watching that. 
I feel like you should. That's the beauty of the fighting. Like, you know, you want your fighter to, like, why not let it all out? Yeah, you know? yeah. So it's just like, to me, trash talking is part of my game, you know? But I'm not, like, trash talking to you. I'm trash talking to myself, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, like, I bet you can't hit him again. Like, uh, I, you, yeah, you, you're... yeah, I talk shit to myself, and then I can see where people kind of get confused. Like, yeah. like, is he talking to me? Like... Oh yeah. Oh, are you gonna let him take you down again? Or are you gonna let him take you down? Oh, you're fucking pussy. Like, and then you uppercut yourself. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then you just do stuff. You just be like, and then like people get always weird out. They be like, dude, you talk to yourself in the fight. And I'm like, I always do. I just talk to myself. Hey, whatever works, and it seems to be working, right? Yeah, I just talk to myself and have fun. Where do you watch the UFC when you're not performing? Just at home on the couch. You know, I, I don't go. I'm I'm boring. Do you get a co- do you get a code? No, you gotta pay for it. You got it. Okay, that was a, that was <laughs> yeah. a question I was gonna ask. Do UFC athletes have to pay for? Maybe if you're famous, like if you're more famous, you know, like if you're like you know, Connor or someone like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, like if Connor says I want free fight pass, you kind of give him free fight pass. You know, you don't. The the employees get it for free, but the athletes don't. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, like, I'm just because saying. like I, as a fan, I've always thought that you guys must have some little code or something that you punch in and you get to watch the fights. I got for the free. Disney Plus bundle with Hulu and and freaking ESPN Plus, and that's how I watch the. But fight. you still got to pay for the fight with right. ESPN Plus. Yeah, man, you got to pay the, for the pay per view. You got to pay for the pay per view. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, ESPN Plus has just gone up because I just renewed my membership and it's, it. it's up to like a hundred and for the year, it's like a hundred and. Mm-hmm. 40 bucks or something. Yeah, now. it's like almost 23, 24 bucks a month now. I mean, it's all right. So let's talk about this weekend then real quick. Obviously, uh, the three fights I don't want to talk about. Um, uh, your man, Kevin Holland, obviously coming up against MVP, mm-hmm. who's just talented all day. Yeah. But I liked what Kevin said today uh, during the press conference. He said, look, you guys know where the top athletes are. It's in the UFC. You don't pay to watch a Bellator UFC. You pay mm-hmm. to watch me. How do you think that fight's going to go? Do you think that do you think that Michael has an, a little bit of an edge being that it's his debut, he's got something to prove, mm-hmm. he's fresh in the promotion? Mm-hmm. Do you think there's an advantage to that or do you think that it's tough, man, cuz you know like MVP is, is good, he's he's a beast, you know, he, you got to give him his pr- credit. And it's right, you do see a lot of guys leave the UFC and they become champs, you know, but you never see guys come from other promotions and become champs in the UFC, you know, so yeah, that's, I've, that's you, know, you never see him, never, haven't, hasn't happened once, you know, so I got to give it to Kevin Holland, but uh, MVP is still dangerous, yeah. you know, he's still a dangerous guy, but if I'm Kevin Holland, I would hate the disrespect that I got because all eyes is on MVP, you know, so <laughs> if I'm him, that's your chance to still, still the spotlight, like, and bring the fans back onto you, you know, so... I think if I'm if I'm Holland, I'm pissed off. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do whatever I can to win, and then put the eyes right back on me. You know, get paid a little bit more, bigger contract. So it's 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 a win win on both sides. You know, if if MVP wins, then because they're both kung fu dudes too, yeah, right? Yeah. So you know, MVP wins, he goes right in the top of the conversation of the sport. If Holland wins, then it just shows like solidifies where he's yeah, already so, at anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know, then because it's gonna be more eyes because MVP is a big draw. So. Why not? Dustin Poirier might be coming to the end of his career. Do you think he'd nope. be loot? You nope. don't, you don't nope. think so? Hell no. Dustin Poirier is Dustin Poirier. He's the beast. I don't care what nobody say. Give me Dustin Poirier. You Dustin, you can hold Dustin for a while yeah, now. I'll put give me Dustin. Over here. Yeah, give me Dustin, man. Look, I love Dustin. I love his story. I love how how he is, how he fights. I love. I just love that, you know, just how he is. So I'm a big fan of Dustin Poirier. And I still give it to him for this weekend. I like Dustin's consistency mm-hmm. and uh, how much he's improved over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, he's been in the promotion for a long time now and Since done like very well. 2013 or something like that. Wow, something? has it been yeah. that long? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going for him this weekend as well. So then, of course, you've got the Sugar Show and Cheeto yeah. Vera. They fought once before. Cheeto got the win. Cheeto likes to come in a little bit later in the game, whereas Sean likes to come yeah. out of the gate and just go bang hard. Yeah. Uh, what What do you think is going to go for that one? Who are you going for? I mean, you know, I just think right now is, you know, Sean O'Malley's found, has found himself. You know what I mean? He has the, the – not, I'm not going to say he doesn't have the hype, but he does. But he has the the mentality, the the aura he right now. He's a champ. You know, he, he's making all this money. So – for him, I think he realized how much he can gain, you know, like just... Staying the champ. Yeah, staying the champ and what he can grow off of. So um, I'm going to give it to Sean, you know. And I, and I like Cheeto. I love his beliefs, his hardworking beliefs. And a guy who's not talented and who had to work for everything, mm. I can account to that, you know. So yep. 
you know, I definitely give props there, you know. But if he can get it done, oh, man, Cheeto can change his life forever, you know. But if I have to go with Aura, Sean, you know, Sugar Sean, you know. Sugar he, Sean. He's going to do his thing, you know, for me personally, you know. Yeah. And I know yeah. he's under my, promote, under my management group. And, uh, you know, I try not to go against guys under my management group, you know. But, uh, you know, Sean has a chance to, like, really make some serious money right now. So I say just go. Just go for it. And another current mad story that came out today, your mate Jake Paul. Going up against one of the greatest of all time, but he's 57. What the fuck's going on? Who should Jake Paul fight to to make a name for him? Make a like people think these fights are um set, not setups, but the paydays. The payday, the, the, the names, the you know, I mean I don't get I don't get it a hundred percent. I like the entertainment value and the eyes it brings, but why are you fighting Mike Tyson just to say, hey, I fucking knocked out Mike? No, yeah, you know, if I'm Jake Paul, once again, I'm not Jake Paul. Never had his money, never had his popularity. So, but um, for him, he's doing the right thing in the sense of with his own promotion, making the money. So I get props to Jake Paul, you know. But if you want the seriousness of like people respecting you and stuff, Mike Tyson's definitely not the way to go. I'm not saying Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson always gonna be Mike Tyson, but he's, come on now, he's almost sixty, you know. But if I'm him, fight these like former world champs in boxing. You know what I mean? Like the washed up guys, you know, and I'm not gonna put any names out there because I don't want nobody coming back at me. But you know, fight these guys who are cruiserweight, former champs, you know, you know, maybe they're on the three, four fight losing straight, they retire for two, three years. Mm. Bring them out of retirement and fight them, you know, so you can get some credibility. You know what I mean? You can build your way up. That's the way I would think he would do it, you know. So I have a few guys and names in my mind that I can see him doing at cruiserweight, mm. but the way I just come on now, leave Mike Tyson alone. Yeah, I know the MMA community is pissed off because we want to keep Mike at a – Mike's the GOAT, man. You know what I mean? I love Mike Tyson. I've Mike always loved goat. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was one of the first – well, not one of the first, but – well, yeah, probably the first of my era, big superstar of, you know, the late 80s when I was really first getting into watching boxing and um, obviously his record stands for itself, but – be interesting to see how that goes. I mean, fuck, it's an exhibition, so it's not a real fight, right? Yeah, but still, I don't want to see Mike Tyson get you, hurt. You know, it's like if when you watch legends like that, you kind of like you just want them to stay where they are. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, man, it's like fucking wanna... Motley Crue. Have you heard Vince Neil sing these yeah, days? Have you heard Bon Jovi sing these yeah, days? You see the horrible. horses are messed up and everything. And horrible like, Madonna. They can't really perform how they used to, and no. it's like those are things that like plays a factor in a lot of things. You know, like I want to see these guys like. When I see Mike Tyson, and I see look, his weed business going crazy. I was just in Amsterdam. He has a fucking weed store out there. Like he's got he's, his own. He's got his own Tyson weed store in yeah, Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actual full Tyson store. Tyson 2.0 coffee shop. It's like in Amsterdam, right in the center. Like it's just things like that, you know. Where it's like this dude's making X amount a year. I know he's making almost two, three hundred thousand million a year. So you don't need to take this fight. Now, what were you doing in Amsterdam, Jamal? Listen. Because I've been there a couple of times myself. Listen, this is what I did. I wake up with a Heineken and Viagra and I just hit that oh, red light shit. district. No, I got scared, man. I ain't gonna lie. I punked out. You did? Yeah, I punked out. Yeah, a lie. bunch of my friends punked out. I did. I was talking a lot of shit till I got there. You know, I was like, yeah, dude, I'm gonna do all this. And then I went to the first door and <laughs> she was like, 100 euros. And I said, okay. And I like ran and I watched everybody else do it. And then I was kind of like, yeah, I'm just gonna. Smoke this joint. <laughs> but I punked that. I ain't gonna lie. But Amsterdam was fun, though. It was fun to see it. I went to, like, the sex show. Uh, yeah, I didn't I do to, that, but I, 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 I had a lot of show. fun in the red light district. Yeah, I didn't do it. I, I, did, I, did. I, I, I made up for both of us. One of my friends went to the blue light. What's the blue light? The transsexual. No way. Yeah, he did. I didn't realize what the blue light meant until, like, you know, like, it got back. <laughs> I didn't know there was a blue light district over there. Well, it's red. Is he? Is no, he? It's a red light district. But then they have, you know, it's red through the windows. Yeah. Some windows are blue. So that says that they're the transgender ones. Yeah, but like one of my friends went and didn't realize that it was a no, transgender I, one. Well, I mean, he stayed in there for a while, so he knew. So he knew. I didn't know what the blue light meant. I just, I didn't find out. Did he know what the blue light meant? I think he probably did. Maybe he's got that real little weird kink that gets, you know, yeah. you, you know, when you're going down that. I fucking, look at him different now. You look at him different yeah. now? I mean, I still, you? <laughs> he's still my friend. But he kind of went to the blue light. Once I found out what the blue light meant, I was kind of like, yo, bro, I know what you did. And he just looked at me, and he didn't say nothing, so I didn't say nothing either. But I was kind of like, you're still my boy, but like. <laughs> this is what you said. <laughs> like, it's not I got that one over you, man. Like, you know, you went to the blue light, bro. Yeah, not something that really. I would... don't care. You like what you like. No, you can like, yeah, what you you like, like what you I like. I mean, 
But it's not my cup of tea. Me either, but yeah. I know what the blue light means. So I was just like, ooh. And well, I'm thank go- God I know I'm actually blue- going there in a couple of weeks. Really? Yeah, not to the blue light, but, you know, I'm going to Amsterdam. Yeah. You got, you got Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, go to the, I'll go to Amsterdam again. Yeah, I like it there. Uh, one of the first times that I went to Amsterdam, I remember, because it was the first time I'd smoked weed in public. Oh, yeah. It's a bit different now. Yeah. But I'm like, you're in a, you're in a, a fucking restaurant or in a cafe or in a pub. And uh, I just remember fucking just kind of standing in the corner. I'm like, <laughs> I'm sucking on this joint. This big fucking black guy comes up to me, bald head, and goes, hey, brother, take your time. And I'm just like, <laughs> he goes, you're in Amsterdam. Take your time. I'll never fucking forget it. I was so uh, we blown away by smoking pot in public. Yeah. You see the 18-year-old kids doing it? Yeah. I was like, because I felt weird because, you, know, Cal- you know, California, it's legal to smoke. Public Vegas is kind of the same thing, but you know, I go there, I'm just smoking weed, and then so I end up going to this bar called Lost in Amsterdam, and it was this cute Romanian girl, right? And like, she was just like, It's a two drink minimum, but you can take whatever you want. She's like, You can take shrooms or you know, smoke, just you have to buy two drinks. I remember going in there, and one of my friends ended up smashing that girl. And then later that day, we go back to Red Light District, she was in the window. And of course was, she was. Yeah, and I was like, ah, oh, I mean, at least you got it for free. But yeah, I was just like, damn, shit, proud. Like, crazy things in Amsterdam. Yeah, for those of you that haven't been to Amsterdam, if you're a real horny bastard, it's the place <laughs> to go, right? It's like window shopping for pussy. It's unbelievable. And now I'm talking about these chicks aren't your average fucking downtown Las Vegas gap tooth crack whore. No. We're talking some supermodel looking kind of women here. We're talking we're talking European, Russian, Croatian, yeah. all those kind of tall you BBLs. know those fucking th- those European looking chicks that you see? Yeah. BBLs, fake tears, all this stuff now. Like they got everything you need. Like they got the BBLs now. Yeah, they got the Are you BBLs into BBLs? Now. No, not really, but like you know, no. I, I watched the YouTube video. Yeah, this will make you fucking puke. So if anyone's eating right now, I'd suggest that you push the food aside. I was watching this YouTube video the other day on BBLs and mm-hmm. apparently they fucking reek. Yeah. Apparently they stink real bad. I mean, you're taking stuff out your body and all the bile and everything, you're sticking it in your ass. It's kind of, <laughs> I mean, you know, that shit is fucking, I just don't, it's like. It just doesn't look it. aesthetically nice to me. Some of them do. Some of them Some do. Some do, you know, but my thing is like how you walk around with a colonoscopy bag and then you can't sleep on your back, you got to sleep with your ass up, you know, like you got shot in the ass <laughs> or something. You know, all, I mean, beauty in the process or however you want to say, you know, pain, beauty, beauty is pain. Pain is beauty. Yeah, you know, it's. You know, as long as I ain't got to pay for it and I can, like, you know, play with it from time to time. And it doesn't have any fucking stank on yeah, it? Yeah, I'm cool with it. You yeah. know, it's like, just yeah. actually, I'm not going to buy it, but, you know, I'm definitely. Yeah. Yeah, you know. Well, I'm blessed. My wife has a beautiful, big, fat, natural Latina ass, so I'm I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah, that, yeah. So you got lucky. You know, not everybody else is so lucky out here, you know? Yeah, yeah. And some of them, they look bad. They're just big for no reason, you know? just big. Especially, like, they got the stick legs the and then the body. big fucking. Yeah. We, what's the thing we call it at home? We call it a cutoff booty. It's, <laughs> when they, <laughs> it's when they got like, you see the thighs, you're like, oh, cool. They got the body, no stomach, and then you look in the back and it's just flat. It's called a cutoff booty. You know, you're just like, damn, bro, you just 42 faces. The front butt. <laughs> yeah, no, it don't even have the front. Like, you, they, they just look nice, and then you, they turn around and just like, it's like, damn, bro, you just made me waste a look. Fuck, Fuck man, I can't do this shit, you know? Yeah. At this point, you know, but it's. But famous. you don't have a girlfriend now, right? I do have a girlfriend. Oh, you do? Yeah, I do have a girlfriend. I love my girlfriend. She's cool. You know, she's like, she's she got a nice body too. So, you know, it just. You guys just, been together for a minute? Yeah, you know, it, it's funny we were talking about that today. Like, she was like, damn, we actually, like, about to hit a year. And I was just like, damn. I mean, I'm, obviously, a year's not long enough, but. No, well, it is It is when you're first together. Yeah. That, yeah. Year, that year mark is always a pivotal mark, always. Yeah, but, like, me, I'm just so, like, laid back and, like, you know, like, just be like, yeah, you don't seem like the type of guy that gets really angry or pissed off. No, nah, I just lay back, man. Just like whatever happens, happens. You know. Why is it always the little skinny fucking Irish guys that mouth off out the window, have road rage, and think they can beat everybody up? Why? Listen. See, this guy here can, but he doesn't. You know, she tells me she's like, you got to give me a reaction. You got to say more than three words. You know, most times I was like, eh, I don't know, cool. Mm. Like, I guess let's do it. I don't know. cool. Yeah. She's like, you got to give me something else. I'm just like, I'm not getting nothing else out of me. You're like, I'm just laid back, you know. So. Now, you know, we were just talking about that today, and then, you know, she she makes life easier. She's cool, so. you got to have a good woman with you, bro. No, that's that's one thing I Fucking realized. Ass, I was fast. I was fast. I ain't going to lie to you. I was doing a lot of crazy stuff, you know, and I think, uh, and not like, but I think when I met her, I was just kind of like, 
damn, you're a dope ass person. You know what I mean? I was just like, it's got to be that different first. qualities. No, it was just like that different quality. You know, yeah. like it was just like, you know, just like even certain things like we don't argue at all, none of that. You mm. can still say it's new, whatever. But it's like we just talk. You know what I mean? Like. You have a problem, just to say it. You know what I mean? Don't yell. Don't do this. Like, cause I don't yell, so I'm just like, look, if you want to talk to me, talk to me. Don't yell. I'm she listening. yell? No, it's just like one of those things. Where she, she a sister? Yeah, yeah. And it, that was, you know. But then it was just like, I think she was so she wasn't used to like having someone else just kind of just talk. You yeah. Know? So it kind of just. Even, yeah, you know what I mean. Even it's, that, yeah, it's even that. Like she was, she was so used to people yelling, like dudes yelling at her. I was so used to girls yelling at me. So we were just like, hey, look, we don't do no yelling. Yeah, and we're just gonna talk. You know, we don't say nothing bad about each other. We just mm. yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't, un, you can't change words. Can't it's like you can't unring a bell. I've never called my me and Jenny have been together this Christmas. It's eleven years, <laughs> and we I've never called her a name. I've mm -hmm. never told her to fuck off. I've yeah. never, never, ever, ever, not once since we've been together have I ever called her a name or and she's she never called me a name either. Yeah, I like that better. You know. I yeah, that's, way that's better. Why, Way better. Less drama. And, like, cause I ain't gonna lie, like I'm still young, so it's like, I, and plus, like, I like that hood rat shit. You know, I ain't gonna lie. You like it? Yeah, I like that hood rat shit. So you like that Nicki Minaj? No, I like, I was like, I was like a black girl just telling me shut the fuck up sometimes. You know what I mean? And you do? Then, yeah, that shit, like, cause it like it excites you, like. And when she threatened you with her brother and shit, that shit, <laughs> that, shit, that, shit just like, that shit cool as fuck if you ask me. Like, cause then you like, yeah, cause you know, it's just like, it gets all intense and shit, you know? Then you just be like, cause I really don't care, cause I would never argue. And then they'd be like, yeah, my brother, fuck you up. Like, you know how this go, go. You know? Bring him over. Yeah, you know, but then like, you like that shit, and you like the makeup sex, and then you like the breaking up, the makeup sex, and then, you know, and then she's mad at you, and then. You know, she texts another dude, and he's like, "Fuck it, I'm out." And then she comes back, you the best head ever. You know, it's like all that shit. But now, but listen, listen. So then, well, <laughs> look, this is gonna sound bad because it's like. So then it was like, and then you'd be like, "How do I get a girlfriend?" Right. So then it was like, um, I would talk to this last girl. You know, this kind of like I did have feelings for, her, and it didn't work out, right? And I was like, man, I gotta stop leaving these fast ass girls alone, man. I need to settle down, right? So I was focused on training. I didn't want no girl. You know, I had little booty calls here and there. And then I seen my girl, and I was like, yo, she's pretty as fuck. Like, this is one of the prettiest girls I've ever seen in my life. And it was weird. Like, not on no movie-type shit, but I was just like, damn, she's pretty. She's beautiful. I was like, I got to get to know her. Then I got to know her, and I was like, yo, you're a dope-ass person. And made I was it like, even better. Which made it even better, you know? So then it was just like, she'll tell me. You know, everybody talks good. But I was just watching how she does things day to day, you know? Like, she just makes sure I was fed, like... Gives me like the uh, what do you call it the um, little face to face treatment. Yeah, yeah. I was like, cut your toenails. She would. I don't let her. I don't like people touching my feet. But oh she really? Would, but she will. My she girl will. cuts mine. Yeah, she will. Yeah. But then I was just like, yo, I never had this kind of treatment before. Nah. And then I think that's what kind of made me realize like, I gotta leave this toxic shit alone. You yeah. Know? And do then, all the right things. Yeah, do the right thing. And plus, I was like, man, I'm getting older. I'm almost thirty. You know, I gotta. <laughs> Get my life together, <laughs> and plus I'm getting more famous and fighting, and I'm making more money, so I gotta can't mm. be out here like being distracted by a bunch of like girls, you know? Yeah, so, a bunch of hood rats. Yeah, a bunch of hood rats. You with but, their I, but I love it. Like I used to love it though. I like that toxic shit. Like tech, like sexy red. I would have I would took down sexy red like a couple years ago. Really? Yeah, Sukiana too. But you know, I got me a nice girl. You know. What's your genre of music that you listen to? I'm R and B dude. You are. I'm a lover boy. I so you would have been happy that Usher performed at the fucking Super Bowl. That was, uh, listen, I was singing all those songs at halftime. I was fucking hanging mega shit and making fun that Usher was the headliner. Really? I feel a little bad now. I just feel like if you grab my girl like that, I have to fight you. You know. The fuck. Yeah, dude. I'm not gonna let you grab my girl like that. That's fucked up, man. Like, I'm yeah. gonna fuck up his performance. So you, man, keep your hands off her waist. You know, like. Yeah. Give her a side hug, you know, like when you don't like someone, like don't grab on my girl like that. I don't know. That's just me, though. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Connor got a little bit flirty with my girl once, Did McGregor. He? You know, even with the Dustin Poirier thing, when he was like, T your wife is in my DM. Isn't Connor fucking funny, bro? I, I, I like him. I like what he does. I like what he does. Well, he's in New York at the moment doing some promo for the new Roadhouse movie. Yeah. That he's doing with Jake Gyllenhaal and yeah, Bob mean, Menery. Like I'm happy for like Connor when you hear his story where he's at now. I think it's cool as hell. I mean, only because fucking how like went from nothing to something to everything in literally this amount of time. So I'm saying he was, he's in a Call of Duty game. He was a character. Like yeah. you know, he's in a movie. He's got the whiskey. He got the whiskey. You know, he got everything. Why not? I like it. Like why not become something? You know. Well, it only it only kind of brings more eyes to the sport and kind of makes it 
I, I think know, he makes definitely elevated, few guys, but he elevated the sport for yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, we never seen the type of money mm-hmm. he was getting mm-hmm. paid until we seen him. So we realized, like, hey, Dana, you could pay us a little bit more because paid this motherfucker twenty million <laughs> plus yeah, right. pay per view. Like, you know. Yeah. But like I said, it's, it's guys like that who transcend the sport who makes it easier for the next generation. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like you give props to guys like him. You know, I feel like. He's, he won't go down as the greatest UFC fighter of all time, but he will definitely go as an icon and a legend of the sport because how much he transcended. And mm-hmm. he got people who didn't watch MMA watch MMA. You know what I mean? So you, Absolutely. you have to give that guy his credit where it's due. So have you been to the Sphere? Or have you obviously you've seen it from the outside? Yeah, I've seen it. So UFC 305, is it? Or 306 oh, has been booked Mexican Independence Day for the Sphere, Las was, Vegas. Dana yeah. White said it's going to be the greatest Sporting event of all time. I was drunk last year for Noche fights. I was in the crowd drunk. Mexican fans. I was there. Me. I was there. I was drunk as hell in the crowd. Yeah. I was getting high with Justin Gaethje in the crowd. And then Terrence McKinney was there. And Terrence <clears> is a good kid. We were getting high. We were drinking. It was a couple other guys, but it was just funny as hell. Yeah. I was just having fun with a bunch of, uh, you know, just a bunch of freaking. Do you know this fucking guy? Let me see. who, Freaking <laughs> Mr. Jenkins. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Jenkins. What's up, buddy? No, you're not interrupting at all, my man. Fucking grab it, grab, grab, grab one of those chairs and come sit over here. Come on, bro. What's come up, on, bud? Come on, bro. I mean, I'm scared of that cat, but no, come on. Know. Yeah, no, I mean, it ain't got no. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. No, don't jump on me. Oh, shit. Oh, oh so shit. He's, the cat's friendly, too. Y- yeah, oh, shit. Oh, shit. It's the cat. You're not a cat guy? I mean, it's just he ain't got no hair. Huh? <laughs> he's, he's just, he doesn't have hands. Oh, he's awesome, man. He's awesome. How are you, brother? Good, man. Good. Hey, buddy. Hey, bud. I'm, I'm glad he I'm goes, but athlete. like Brennan, on TV. no, but Brennan goes around and puts stickers of him on people's shit. <laughs> like he got pictures, like stickers, and just put them on random people's shit. He does? Yeah. Like, what kind of stickers? Stickers of his cat? Yeah, stickers of his cat. Just put it on people's <laughs> Do you phones. really? Yeah, just put it on people's phones and shit. He's I got a tattoo on everything. I, I, I know. Yeah. I wouldn't even put my dogs, and I love my dogs. Uh, <laughs> Shave uh, naked pussy. Yeah. I don't, honestly, you know, that little bush is coming back because of woman's rights and shit, so the bush is coming back. I'm just saying, you know, you can... I don't mind a bit of bush, to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm like, are you down for a bit of bush? Or do you, no. you like that... Yeah, you gotta. You gotta. You like a little bit of nah. little, little bit of. Uh, I mean, you have a, back to the seventies. You can have like a little landing strip, but it can't. You know, gotta be like smooth. But like when it gets bushy, it kind of keeps the stank in there, right? Yeah, I don't like that. You know, fuck, man. I mean, I can't go down there and yeah, yeah. yeah I can't. It's just ooh. Yeah, Joey, are you someone that likes to go down on big hairy pussies? Not too hairy, but if they have someone they're confident with it, I like it. But yeah. do, but you do you eat pussy? That's the question. Come on. Okay, I mean, some people don't. You know what I mean? One of my boys don't. I don't even know how he keeps his wife. They've been married for so long. He, just, he does. He well, he just doesn't like he, it. No, he don't like it. But I feel like the, it's a certain woman. You know, I was like, I, I always joking. I say like, you must not love her because like, or there's something going on down there. Yeah, no, you don't love her enough. You know what I mean? Cause, yeah. Because you know, girls will go down there if it's smelly. You know, because they love you. You know, they won't trip. But I'm like, if you won't go down there. <laughs> Yeah, right, right after right at, the gym. I've done that a few times. Not like to my girl, but like I've done that to a bunch of hoes because I like I don't really respect them. Yeah. So like I just like, like I'm not gonna wash this shit for yeah, a couple of weeks. I need yeah, to build like, that right up. For my girl, I'm you know I'm washing, but for other people, nah. You getting this dirty ass dick and that's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't done that because you know I'm in a relationship. You, yeah, you're but, in a relationship. But, I, but I'm just saying in the past, I've done it many a times, and they made me like disgusted with women because I'd be like, I know you smell this because I smell myself. You're a disgusting ass person. Right? Yeah, I had but a buddy, they, buddy that did that. He was on tour for like, for, we were on tour in Canada, traveling around. He's like, I'm not gonna wash this thing for a week, and I guarantee you, I'll still get it sucked every night. And he did. Yeah, like, like she was yeah. growing on it. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I, I've done it. Like, just right after wrestling practice, just like, you know, hit a girl up, I'm leaving practice. And just do it. She's like, you didn't take a shot? I'm like, no. She's like, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, boy, yeah. But like, a part of me liked that shit. That's what I'm saying. But then the other part was like, you're a nasty ass bitch. Like, I, I can never see myself. Oh, they just you. really like you a lot. I don't want you to like me that much. Yeah, you, know, <laughs> like, yeah. you, got, you got to have a little bit of self-respect. But that's what I'm saying, because like, that's why I'm in that in-between until I met my girl, because it was like... If you had no self-respect and, like, I can just let you out, I loved you. You know what I mean? But then I didn't really respect you. 
this has been a great conversation here today. It was a little bit different than ours yesterday. We've gone down a few different lines and it's been, it's been amazing. It's been amazing. So how do you know this guy anyway? Syndicate, man. Yeah, what are you trying yeah. to syndicate, man? Yeah, we were talking about you yesterday. You said you were a good dude. No, you know, Brandon's a super cool dude. I just feel like I'm the more quiet, reserved type. So I feel like he might think I don't like him sometimes. But yeah. really, I just be like, like, I just be focused. Like, I got to do this, this, this. And then he'll come talk to you. But you get mad because you're like, bro, focus on this. Mm. And he just, because he always has good energy. He's always positive. He's always happy. And then, like, I'm angry and black. You know, so then, like, it, it fucks up my day because I'll be trying to do something. He'd be like, hey, Jamal, we're going to do blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, uh, yeah, um, I got you, Brandon. But, like, I'm not in the mode to do that right I'm now. cutting weight right now. We can't go but to then, fucking In-N-Out Burger. No, no, but, <laughs> yeah, but. Do you cut weight? No, no, no. You've never, ever cut weight? I mean, at 205, I just, just can't What are you, 265? What do you no, walk I'm around like, at? I'm, like, 270 right now. But you fight at 265, yeah, two, right? Yeah, yeah. What's the weight limit you can be? 265. Nothing over? No. Mm. Well, you get 66, like a pound. Yeah. Yeah, you get a pound. So you walk around. So you never, never. So that's got to be, a, like, an advantage because, I mean, I know the weight cutting process for most fighters is a fucking killer. How do you, so was that, is that an advantage? I mean, I used to cut, like, 35 pounds and make 205. Fuck. Yeah, so I was like 240, go to 235, and I'm talking about eating clean, 235, and then cut my meals in half, get to like 220, and then cut the rest in water. You know, I always had a horrible cut, so when I came back, going to heavyweight was just fun. You know, I went a little bit overboard and started eating like a lot of shit because I couldn't really do it before, but, yeah. but you know, I mean, I still got to cut like 15, 20 pounds off of me, you know, but at the same time, I do like heavyweight more. You smoke a lot of pot? No, not really. You you like munchy out when you smoke it, like burgers and c cookies and shit like that. No, you know it's funny. I like I like taking an edible or smoking, but then like experiencing shit. Mm. You know, like one time I was like chasing aliens, but like yeah, Chase, you were chasing yeah, them. Yeah, like you were on you were probably on these. Oh shit, I don't know. I was, no, I, I smoked some wood. I, no, we went to like a desert and like. Oh, yeah. well, you do the laser. Yeah, we just like doing Did it work? Yeah, that shit. I was high as hell. Oh, you, you, saw, you saw some shit up there? We saw some shit, but then like we were chasing it. And then I was like, and then like eventually like it just sped off. And then I was like, right, and then I like got scared and I ran back. Yeah, I would fucking shit myself a yeah, lot. So, so you saw something up there and then it. Yeah, so we're just trying to like chase after it, you know? So. There's a company here in Las Vegas that takes you out to a certain part of the devil. The guy's uh, desert. The guy's name is Jim Greers, I believe, or Stephen Greers. He did that documentary, um, Undisclosed or something, and you go out there with these long pointed lasers and after a while you'll start seeing shit that goes to where the lasers are and yeah, it's freaky stuff. I can't believe this cat's like a dog. It's my, if my cat was in here, shit would be getting, it'd be running around in circles, tearing everything up. That's what I'm saying. My dog won't even leave my side. I'm what do you got? I have a beagle and an Australian shepherd. Oh uh, yeah. I, I got, got a French bulldog and a cockapoo. Yeah. I, like, I feel like I couldn't get it like a nigga dog. You know, <laughs> like, I get, get like a pit bull. Or, yeah. I get like a beagle. Like, <clears throat> I'm already big and black with braids, you know, so like, I feel like. Cause There's I look, already a stigma against you yeah, in there, right? And, and so like, you might as well go the whole. Yeah. Get the big gold chain around. I got tattoos fucking, and everything. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's like, and I'm the only black dude in my neighborhood. So I think um, I had to like get something to make like white people not scared of me. Yeah. So when you walk around with a beagle, you know, you're not really a threat. Nah. Oh, yeah. one of those. Oh, that, one of those. Yeah. So I was like, I couldn't really. He's get awesome, dog. man. My dog name is Steve. Name a white name. Yeah, name a white name. That's what I'm saying. Like I just had to give him normal people names. Oh, absolutely. Like, Chaz, right? Chaz was my cat. Yeah. Good memory. See, that's what I'm saying. What's his name? Cheeto. Not like Vera. You don't like that? Yeah. So, so what's next, man? Like, what's coming up next? Uh, I'm trying to get my fat ass in shape. Yeah. Yeah. That's, Got anything that's... in the horizons? No, man. You know, honestly, I really pride in these off seasons. Like, I really, like, focus on technique and, you know, things I want to grow on. Mm. Right now, I'm helping out Carl Williams, and uh, he fights Justin Toff for the 23rd, you know, this month. And then I have other, I'm going to I'm going to uh, Belfast for uh, Isaiah. He fights for uh, PFL now. So right now, I've been kind of helping them get ready for their fights since they helped me. And then after that, I'm just going to drill stuff. You know, just go You've been to there. Ireland before? No, first time. I you like it. The food's great over there. Is it? Is it yeah, good? Yeah, I yeah, mean, really London good. food was yeah. disgusting. People are lovely. I know. That's what they told me. Everybody keeps saying I'm going to have red-headed black babies. Yeah. Oh, know. yeah. They love those big black guys over there. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. In Australia, too. I think I should do what a lot of black parents do and come back on, you know, when they get drafted in soccer. 
You know, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I wish I had done a two-hour podcast because we didn't even touch on half the subjects that I want to touch on. What I like to do is, man, when I close up um, with, with, with the show, is I always like to ask my guests. Sometimes they can answer it. Sometimes they can't. But Jamal Pogues, what is your message? Uh, my message to the world would be love yourself, um, push the limit. And, you know, one of the things my mom told me um, – when I started this sport was if you want it bad enough, you'll figure a way out, you know? So, um, if you guys love something, you know, be willing to go through the ups and the downs, you know, stay consistent, stay persistent. And, you know, eventually, you know, you do, you just need that one door to open, you know? Mm. And I felt like, you know, two years ago, that door finally opened for me in the UFC, you know? So I'm glad I didn't shut that out completely in my life, you know? So just keep pushing, you know, push the limit at this point. Uh, I came from the lowest of lows, so I really can't really, you know, tell people, I feel like I can accomplish anything, you know, from the life I was given and the things I went through. So I just tell anybody, just keep pushing it. Push the limit, keep going, don't quit. And then it's it's fun when you get to see the, the you know, just the, the benefits. fruits of your rewards. Yeah, you know, when you get to see a lot of the benefits of it. Like, uh, you know, it's little things. You know, you, you I appreciate things probably a little bit more than most people do, you know, I guess. Um, some people take advantage of it, but for me, I just appreciate it all. You know, the people I meet, um, being in the rooms with certain people and – like I say, you know, I just meet so many people day in and day out, different ethnicities, you know, cultures. And I think that's what I love about the sport is just I get to meet so many people, get to, like, I get to travel. I'm the first person in my family to travel out the country. Wow. So, so you know, I kind of feel like that's one of the coolest things, you know, where, you know, a lot of people never left my, my, my hometown. They never left the hood. A lot of people, like a lot of my family in L.A. never left L.A., you know. The closest they got was coming to Vegas for a weekend, you know, so, like, mm. Like I'm, I'm over here talking about traveling to a different country. So I just, yeah. you know, I just say like, just keep pushing the limit, you know, and believe in yourself, you know, and whatever happens, just, just ride with it, you know, because one day just go in, you know, and just be proud of yourself. So honestly, I'm just proud of myself every day. So that's why I just get up every day, work my ass off, don't even think about it. It's just, just, just normal to me, I guess, at this point. Yeah. So just keep pushing. That's really keep what pushing. I tell people. Just keep, keep pushing. pushing. Keep, you know, if you don't believe in yourself and you don't have answers. Just keep working through it. It's going to eventually happen, you know? So that's pretty much it. If you can get anything out of this podcast today, you can get something that keeps reoccurring over and over again. Don't quit. Don't just let it go. Just keep pushing and pushing. Keep going. Even if you think it's not going to happen. Even if you think, fuck, this opportunity is over. It's not. This guy's proven it. And so many other people that I've spoke to prove it. Don't give up. That's the secret. What's the secret? The secret is don't give up. And that's all it is, Jamal. Thank you, sir. You've been fucking awesome, bro. <laughs> Thank you, man. Guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you YouTube me and subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment. It helps with the algorithm. I know that everyone says that on a, every channel, but it helps with us. You guys have been awesome. Um, today's episode was brought to you by Muse. I'm Marcus Deegan here at Sticky Paws with the big heavyweights, the Stormtrooper himself, Jamal Pogues. We're out. <laughs>